Good morning and welcome to Remote Worship for United Churches of Durham for Sunday, January 10th, 2021. I keep being astonished by the date. Man, what a difference a week makes. Last Sunday, I was wishing you Happy New Year, which was its own astonishment. And this Sunday, we're looking back on one of the most tumultuous weeks, perhaps in our whole history. As we gather for worship today, I know all of us share a deep concern for our country and for our future together as a nation. Next Sunday, January 17th, we will have a virtual coffee hour at 10.30 a.m. We'll begin with a time of prayer where we can share our joys and concerns live and in person, and then have time just to chat. You'll have to make your own coffee, but it will be nice to see everyone, even if it's just on a screen. Uh, you'll get a Zoom link in the MailChimp this week with instructions on how to join the gathering. I look forward to seeing your faces. As always, please contact the office if you need help or pastoral care, and you can reach out to me at miltybc at aol.com. And now let us begin our worship together with the call to worship. Please join me. Some days we come to worship because we want to celebrate all that God has done. Some days we come with hearts full of hope because of what has happened. And then some days we come in grief with our hearts broken and in need of God's healing touch. All paths, all our paths to worship because all our ways that God's love and grace can find us. Come, let us worship together. Our time of confession is a part of our worship service each week when we come to ask forgiveness of those places where we have missed the mark of love. So let us join together now in that time together. Gracious God, we are a broken nation. We struggle to live together. We are too often driven by our fear rather than our faith in you. We ask for your grace and strength to say the things that must be said and to live out your love in our country. Amen. My friends, God's love is greater than any fear or anger. We are forgiven. Let us open our hearts and receive the grace of God. Our scripture passage this week may sound familiar to you because it's the same scripture passage that we read last week, Matthew 2, 1 through 12. I will explain the repetition shortly. It is the coming of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, sages came from the east to Jerusalem and they asked, Where is the newborn king of the Judeans? We've seen his star in the east and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Messiah was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is where what the prophet wrote, You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod Herod secretly called for the sages and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went, and look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod. They went back to their own country by another route. 
As I said earlier, I know I'm preaching on the same passage I read last week. I don't know that I've ever done that before when I've had occasion to preach two weeks in a row. And I must say, as we begin this reflection, I want to ask you to breathe in deep the depth of God's love for all humanity as we move into this passage. You see, as I sat in front of my television on Wednesday on Epiphany and watched insurrectionists take over the Capitol building because people had been encouraged to do so by some of our elected leaders, I came back to this passage because of this verse. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. That sentence has always struck me odd because I've never understood how everyone in Jerusalem could have known that the sages had stopped by the palace to ask directions to where the Messiah had been born. But once they did, Herod went on a rampage and demanded that all the children under the age of two be killed to make sure he held on to power. So a better translation or paraphrase might be everyone in Jerusalem was troubled because of him rather than with him. Herod was troubled by the prospect of being replaced. Jerusalem was troubled because he took out his fear and anxiety and anger on them. And I think that looks a lot like what we've seen happen in our own country this week. Now I want to pause here again and say that I'm aware that my sermon so far may be troubling to all of us. I'm the bridge pastor filling in for Pastor Jeanette. You and I don't know each other well. We don't even get to see each other face to face. If you're like most any congregation in this country, you're spread across the political continuum. And part of the reason we as a nation have gotten to a place that we had people storming the Capitol is we haven't figured out how to talk to each other about difficult things. So bear with me. My sermon last week focused on the last verse in the passage. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. And, and I said, for all that was difficult and tragic about 2020, I hope it gives us, I hope it calls us to act like the wise ones and go home by another way. Rather than reconstructing the life we knew before covid Let's take this chance to tear down the things that need to be torn down, to leave behind behaviors that divide and discourage us on both personal and societal levels, and to do the work of finding a better way to live together. I, I still hope we do all of that. But today I want to imagine ourselves in the story not as the magi who get to skip town and avoid all the craziness, but as the people of Jerusalem who were already home and had to figure out how to live in the middle of the troubles, because I think that's who we are in this story. The sages went home. The people of Jerusalem had to stay and live through the massacre of their children, through the madness of their leader, through all that divided and frightened them. They didn't have another not only not another way to go home, they didn't have another home. They were home. And home was falling apart. Matthew's gospel is centered on Jesus' story. So he goes on to tell us about Mary and Joseph fleeing into Egypt and staying there until Herod died so that Jesus was safe. He doesn't give an account of how the people of Jerusalem survived. We don't have any other stories about angels showing up to warn anyone else about Herod being on a rampage, only that he went after every child under the age of two. No wonder everyone in Jerusalem was troubled. In my sacred imagination, I can see a variety of responses to Herod's onslaught. 
Most of all, I picture people finding ways to take care of each other once they figured out what he was up to. I imagine those who didn't have children hiding the babies of their neighbors so the soldiers couldn't find them. I imagine people working hard to figure out ways to alleviate the suffering of those who had lost their children. I'm sure there were some who bought what Herod was selling, but that kind of fear has a short shelf life. No one survives for long when they are fueled by anger and fear, even when they dress it up as power. But when things are difficult, it's hard to choose not to be fueled by anger and fear because those are both high energy fuels. But anger and fear do not create community. They isolate us because they both require a target. In times like ours where divisions run deep or at least where we're constantly told that we need to choose sides, we need to learn how to stay home by another way, if you will. And I know that's not easy work. Like many, I have a family member I don't know how to talk to in these days. Mine is my brother, and my faith calls me to figure out how to do that. We have to learn how to talk to each other at every level of life, or more than just our children are going to die. We have to learn not to allow our vocabulary to be limited by those in power. We are more than red and blue. We are more than our opinions, our fears, our demands, our desires, our issues, our privilege, our heritage, even our hopes. We are more than, well, pick any polarity you want. We are, first and foremost, people created in the image of God and worthy to be loved. And that goes for every last one of us. The troubles in our country are far from over. Whatever media gets our attention is packed with articles and speeches that dissect our problems and speculate about our future. Lots of folks are blasting blame across the airwaves. Others shout in hatred, in disgust, even righteous indignation. Many voices are going to keep shouting. We, however, are not required to join the chorus. I want to say that again. We are not required to join the chorus. We can stay home by another way. We can speak truth to power and name injustice without becoming one of the hateful folks that seem to be magnets for the camera. We can choose not to listen to Herod or his minions. They are not telling the truth. Power is not the point. Listen to Jesus. Love God with all of who you are and love your neighbor as yourself. At the start of this sermon, I ask you to breathe in the depth of God's love. I know that phrase because many years ago, two friends of mine wrote a song called The Depth of God's Love. And the chorus says, the depth of God's love reaches down, down, down to where you, where we are until we're found, found, found. A quiet word or none at all pursues the heart behind the wall and to those who wait with darkness all around. The depth of God's love reaches down. No matter how loud the chorus, love will always be the last word. Amen. <laughs>
sing a song of love, a song of God's love, and the depth of God's love reaches down, down, down. Quiet word or none at all pursues the heart behind the wall unto those who wait with darkness all around. The depth of God's love reaches down when life surrounds itself with thieves. Loneliness and private tears, your gentle arms embrace our years with love. The depth of God's love and the depth of God's love reaches down, down, down to where we are until we're found. Behind the wall and to those who wait The darkness all around The depth of God's love reaches down Love expressed in earthy ways Sturdy hand, a smiling face With graceful eyes that see beneath What others see and seldom reach God's love exposed in sacrifice the depth of God's love is Jesus Christ and the depth of God's love reaches down 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 to where we are until we're found 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 Quiet word or none at all pursues the heart behind the wall and to those who wait with darkness all around the depth of God's love reaches down yes to those who wait with darkness all around the depth of God's love reaches down. Now let us join together in the prayers of the people followed by the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, like the old gospel song says, we are tired, we are weak, we are worn. As we hold hope in the vaccine, the COVID death counts have continued to rise. As we pray for our future, the economic signs are daunting. As we anticipate a change in government, it feels like we are at war with ourselves. Our hearts are heavy, our minds are tired. We feel the pain of isolation from one another more pointedly than ever. Draw near to us, O God. Let us feel your love. Let us share your love with one another. We pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As is our practice, we close our service with our offering. Some of you will mail it in to the church office at 228 Main Street in Durham. Others will contribute online or through the Tithely app. And those details are in the description on this link or on our church website. As we think about our financial gifts, let us remember that we offer not only our treasure, but our time our energy, our expertise, our passions, 
and our abilities. Let us bless our offering together. Gracious and giving God, we have done a lot of asking today. Anytime we come to you, it seems we need something, and you respond with love and grace. In this moment, we offer our lives back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, go in peace, live in grace, trust in the arms that will hold you. Go in peace, live in grace, trust God's love. Amen.